Hi, welcome to the course. Um, I'm Mr. Smith. Hopefully I'll see you guys next week. Um, in case you don't have a math teacher in the classroom today, I'm going to do a quick run through of the information here on the slides. Fortunately, I don't have my iPad with me to write. I'm going to have to write with my big chubby fingers on my touch screen, so my writing is going to be awful today. I'll just give you a quick run through. So here in this discussion, you to discuss with whether uh, we can ever measure anything accurately. Okay, so if we measure something, let's say we measure somebody's weight and we say it's 68 kil kilograms, we're probably measuring to the nearest kilogram there. So 68, yeah, we can measure it accurately to a certain degree. So if we're measuring it accurate, if we're measuring it to the nearest kilogram, it's only accurate to the nearest kilogram. It's not exact. There's a difference. Uh, we could measure it to the, accurately to the nearest gram. We could say it's 68.01. Um, still, we're only measuring it as accurately to the nearest uh, gram, and so on. Um, so we can't actually measure anything accurate. If we measure, so it depends what type of data we're collecting. So measuring, you could measure how many people are in the room. No, you're not measuring here. This is counting. This is a different type of information. This can be exact. So if you're measuring something, it's continuous data, like weight. If you're counting something, it's discrete data. Um, and you can count things accurately. Okay, we're going to look a little bit at significant figures. This is really important on this course. Um, anything, any exam that you write, any paper that you write, you must always carry exact values all the way through. But what you write on your paper at the end or when you write something down, you write to the nearest uh, three significant figures. So three significant figures is important. So for significant figures, what we do is we take a number and we scan across the number to the first non-zero digit. From that point onwards, we count three digits. So giving you some answers here, this first one, we're going to be taking the first three digits, which is 21.3, but the three there at that point, we have to round it using the normal rounding figures. Because the next digit is a five, we're going to have to round it up. So the first one is going to be 21.4. The next one is already in three significant figures, 1.25, as is the next. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm not rounding. <laughs> I'm determining the number of significant figures. Let's scratch that. Um, so how many significant figures in the first one? That's four significant figures. The second one's three. The third one's three. The next one's four. The next one... 0 0.00300, that's three significant figures. So we go to the first non-zero digit, which is the three, and there are two digits after that, so that's three significant figures. The next number is 0 0.002, so that's one significant figure. Okay, round the following numbers to the required number of significant figures. We need to round this first one to two significant figures. So that's going to be 0.12b. Um, we need to add two significant figures. We've got a 9 there um, at the cutoff point, and the next number is a 6. So we have to round up. If we round 9 up, we get 10. So we have to move across. But your answer for this one has to be 0 0.3. Zero. Without that zero at the end, it wouldn't be two significant figures. So three significant figures for the next one. That's going to be four point. Sorry, four one five. And three significant, two significant figures for the next one. Ooh, this one's tricky. This one's tricky. So this one, we're going to. We've got three zero, and then we have to cut it off at the five. So that's going to cause us to round up. So that one's going to be three one. It rounds up, but we have to put these place values in up to there. Otherwise, we change the number to 31. That would be stupid. So this is 3,100. Jane's weight is 68 kilograms to the 68 kilograms to the nearest kilogram. Determine the upper and lower bounds of her weight. Okay, so this has been rounded. 
Uh, this is a rounded value. Um, we don't know what the weight was, so it, the smallest it could have been would be 67.5, which would round up, so it could be this value, up to 68.5, but it can't be this value. Oh, sorry. 68.5. Notice that I don't have the 68.5 included. I have the less than symbol. So I have 67.5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 68.5, because 68.5 itself would get rounded up. Anything less than that would get rounded down to 68. So Rushda's height is measured as 150 to the 55 to the nearest centimeter. Write the interval within which her exact weight lies. So this is going to be 154.5, less than or equal to, up to 155.5. And that would get us our rounding. Majid ran 100 meters in 11.3 seconds. This time is measured to the nearest tenth of a second. Determine the upper and lower bounds. Okay, so this is measured to the nearest tenth. So that is going to be 11.25. Up to 11. Point three five let me just think that through make sure i'm getting it right yep that bit's right let me look there um, yep yeah. oh i missed this okay so you were to discuss this one a little bit jad and jude's calculations results in the number two one point zero three one four two jad uses the result 2.1. Jude says 2.10 is more accurate. Jad replies, no, they're the same. Who's correct? Well, in this case, um, let me see who's done. Jad uses the number 2.1. Jude is more accurate. 2.10 is more accurate than 2.1. And it comes from this bound. So if uh, you're using 2.1, that could be anything from 2.05, which would be JAD, up to um, 2.15. So when he says 2.1, that's a number that is in that bound. Whereas Jude, when she says 2.10, that is 2. Point, um, so this one has rounded up. Oh, that one's a tough one. 2.005. Zero, zero, no. 2.095 up to 2.10 Yeah. Okay, so we look at the range of values here. It's a much smaller range of values in Jude's number than in Jad's number. There's a much smaller range of possible numbers that would fit into it. A lot of the numbers in Jad's interval would not be good in Jude's interval. Um, so more significant figures means more accuracy. Even if the last digits are zero, they mean something. Have a go at these questions. There, you'll find the answers in the textbook. Um, hopefully you can get access to the textbook. You can find this on the Google Classroom. There is a code for each of you 
on the Google Classroom for you to access the online textbook. You can get a PDF of the textbook, but it's uh, an older version. So this textbook, when it came out five years ago, has quite a few errors in it. So some of the questions will be wrong, some of the answers will be wrong um, in the older version of the PDF and the physical textbook. The online one has a lot more resources. Some of the codes don't work, uh, I've noticed from last year. So let me know if one of your codes doesn't work and I can try and find you a different code that will work until we get one working. Percentage error is important for us. We have the percentage error formula. Um, it's given there on the formula sheet. You can find a copy of the formula sheet we're gonna use for every exam on the Google Classroom. I've posted it there for us. Um, this one causes some problems because we have the approximate value and the exact value um, and then sometimes those names change and the A and the E get interchanged but it, as long as you have um, the exact value in the denominator this formula will work um, it works fine so the fraction 7 22 over 7 is often used as an approximation of pi this approximation it, it's 3,000 years old at least, the Babylonians were familiar with this and it gives you quite a decent approximation for pi. How close to how close to how many decimal places does 22 over 7 approximate pi? So let's pull that one up on my calculator and we'll have a look at that one. Hopefully you're familiar with your calculator by now at this point. So when you use your calculator Let me just look there. When you use your calculator, start by pressing the on button like this. It brings you to here. Press, always start with a new document. Press one, say no. Add a calculator uh, and then start from this point. So we want 22 over seven. And we press enter. If you get this on your calculator and you want a certain number of decimal places, press control enter and it will give you um, an approximation. Let's pull up pi here, press control enter. Look at that, the first three, perfect. Um, and if you were to round this to four significant figures, it's gonna be the same as well. Um, so it's quite a good uh, approximation. So it's accurate to three decimal places, but even if you, sorry, if you round to three decimal places, you'll get the same number. Let me see. No, you won't. That one goes up. So no, two decimal places. <laughs> if you round to two decimal places, you'll get the same number. Um, the first three digits, sorry, is what's correct. If we round this one, it's going to go up to two. But if we round that one, it's also going to go up to three. So no, not quite. Find the percentage error of this approximation, giving your answer to two decimal places. So we need the percentage error formula. It is the approximation minus the exact over the exact. Let me show you how to do this on the calculator. You can find a lot of tools on the calculator by pressing this button next to the nine, the templates button. This is where you can find the absolute function. Um, you can also in there find the quotient function like this one. And then we need to put in the approximate which is 22 over seven minus the exact. Now the exact is there, it's pi all over pi times by 100%. Now on the calculator, we can't put the percentage thing in. We just type it like this. Uh, so we get to two decimal places, that is 0.0. .0 so this is accurate to 0.04%. Pretty accurate, pretty accurate. Here's an investigation for you to do. I like you to do this for yourself. You can do this, I'm not gonna go through this one now. There's some questions for you to work with. Um, also, I'd like to have a look at this video that I've shared with you on the Google Classroom about how to measure a tree. Um, and lastly, you're gonna get a homework every class. You're gonna get exercises from this textbook or from Cognity or from some other place. 
when you're doing exercises from the textbook, you must um, start uh, answer in a dedicated math exercise book. There should be a square paper exercise book. Start with a title from the Google Classroom. So for every lesson says lesson one, so on. So this one's a lesson one approximations. That's your title for today. Write that in your exercise book and then answer each exercise. You say exercise one, exercise 1a, 1b, 1c, and then questions one, two, three, and so on. Put those in the, um, in the margin. Answer the questions, show you're working. Don't write answers only, unless it's, uh, you know, roundness to three significant figures. There's no working on that one. Um, I will at times look in your textbook to see whether you're completing this and I need the, uh, these titles to find the information. All your work has to be in the same book. So if in a month's time I say, show me your textbook, um, I want to see all of the work that's been assigned in one place. You can't say, oh, I'm at home. I'll give you, I won't give you the grade for it then and you'll lose a minor grade. All right, that's it. Hope to see you next week.